Hello students, we are starting a new topic on combinational logic circuits, which will be the second chapter of our textbook. In chapter two, in this chapter, we will learn about the gates, which are the most primitive logic elements used in microcontrollers. Also, we will learn the mathematical techniques for designing circuits from this gate. And we will also learn how to design a cost-effective circuit. The topics in this chapter will be divided into three parts. Today we'll study the part one on gate circuits and then the Boolean equation. Digital circuits manipulate binary information and the circuits are hardware components. We can implement the circuits using transistors and interconnections in complex semiconductor devices, which are called as integrated circuits. In such circuits, each basic circuit is referred as a logic gate. Right. And we, we can model such electronic circuits as logic gates, in fact. For instance, each gate in a logic, I mean, in this basic circuit would perform a specific logical operation. And then the output of gates are applied to the input of other gates and which will form a digital circuit. Right. So the first step is to become familiar with binary logic and then gates. Right. For, for example, here we have a binary logic, which deals with binary variables, which can take on two, let's say, discrete values. And we can apply mathematical, logical operations to these variables, variables. There are three basic logical operations, such as and, or, and then not. Okay? They're also called as logical functions, logic functions. In order to describe the operation properties of digital circuits, we need to introduce a mathematical notation that specifies the operation of each gate. And that can be used to analyze and design circuits. We will study Boolean algebra to describe the interconnections of digital gates and to design logic circuits through the manipulation of Boolean expressions. We know that binary variables can take two values and may be called by different names. It would be very convenient for us to think in terms of binary values and assign ones or zeros to each variable. For instance, the other examples of binary variables can be used to represent true, false, on, off, yes, no, for example, and one and zero, right? Moreover, we can denote variables by uh, letters of alphabets, such as, uh, let's say, A, B, or C, D, or Y, Z, or X, or no. Well, later, this notation can include string of letters, numbers, or special characters, such as shown here, reset, start, underscore, it, add one. Okay, we, we will use this kind of um, string of letters or characters to represent binary variables associated with the binary variables are those three basic logical operations that we discussed. They are AND, OR, and NOT. Well, AND here, this operation is represented by a dot or sometimes by the absence of an operator. Or this operation is represented by a plus symbol. And not here, this operation is represented by uh, bar over the variable or sometimes single quote mark after the variable or sometimes this tilde before the variable. Let us take a look at these notation examples used with logical operations. For instance, y is equal to A, and this is AND, right? AND operation. A and B. 
So we read it as y is equal to a and b. We don't say a or times b. We don't confuse it with uh, multiplication. Here, z is equal to x plus sign here represents the or operation, right? x or y. Okay? z is equal to x or y. And the third example is the example of not. x is equal to not a. So over bar here denotes a not operation. Note that the following statement, 1 plus 1 equal to 2, which we read as 1 plus 1 equals to 2, is not the same as 1 or 1 equals to 1. Okay? Here we're talking about the Boolean operation. The binary logic resembles binary arithmetic, and the operations AND and OR have indeed similarities to multiplication and addition, respectively. This is why symbols used for AND and OR are the same as those used for multiplication and addition. However, we, we note that binary logic should not be confused with binary arithmetic. Okay, so one should also remember that arithmetic variable de designates a number uh, that may consist of many digits, where a logic variable is always either a one or a zero, so it's a binary variable. Okay, the following equations define the logical operations for AND, OR, and NOT. N operation is identical to binary multiplication provided that we use only a single bit if we use single bit so 0 and 0 is 0 0 and 1 is 0 right 1 and 0 is equal to 0 1 and 1 is equal to 1 well our operation is uh, very similar to binary addition except for one for the last operation right so 0 or 0 is 0, 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 0 is equal to 1, 1 or 1 is equal to 1. It's not 2, it is 1, right? Uh, because we are dealing with binary logic, not binary arithmetic. That's why 1 or 1 is 1. Well, not operation can be interpreted as the inversion of a single bit. It also can be referred to as, as a complement operation. For example, 0 over bar represents 1 is equal to 1. 1 over bar is equal to 0. So not 0 is 1, not 1 is 0. Let's take a look at the following uh, tables, so-called truth tables, for AND, OR, and NOT operations. We see that for each combination of values of binary variables, such as x, and then y, there is a value of z specified by the definition of the logical operation, either by and, or, or not. Well, these kind of definitions can be listed in a compact form in a so-called truth table, for example, here. right? The, we call these kind of tables as truth table. The truth table for an operation and, for example, is a table of combination of, of the binary variables showing the relationship between the values okay, that the variables take on and then the values of the result of the, the operation. Okay. We can see here through scale for AND, OR, and NOT. For all possible input combination, we have the output okay, values. Okay, as a result of operation. So that's a, the definition of truth tables. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the following example, where logic gates and operations can be represented for logic, logic function implementation. For instance, we have the following three different type of circuits with switches this one uh, symbol indicates a switch right this and this one uh, this symbol represents um, the lamp okay 
and then here we have the the battery which supplies uh, electrical energy and then depending on the, the the logic of the switches we can either turn the light on or off okay here for inputs we have the logic uh, for when we consider inputs the logic one is um, the case where switch is closed for inputs okay for outputs this corresponds to either the light is on or off okay logic one corresponds to the case where light is on logic zero corresponds to the uh, this case when the light is off okay and we have not cases where um, when logic one is then the gate will be open because this is the, the complement or it inverts the state right c over bar logic zero versus one switch is close right so look um depending on the state of the switch the lamp is on or not okay so electrical energy flows so we have one, two uh, get, um, two switch one two and then this switch in par i mean in series these ones are in parallel and this one is in, in uh, your normal closed switch so here we can use or and here we can use and gate right and here uh, not gate now if you take a look at this uh, example where we have uh, four switches right with uh, denoted uh, characters a b c and then d and then depending on the state of the switches uh, combined the light can be turned on and off for instance let's take a moment and then think about the state of each a b c d uh, switches needed to turn the light on to let the, the electric energy flow right so it can, the electrical energy can flow from this direction a b and then c or a and d this one right and okay so if you denote the l as a this state light then l of a b c d would be equal to think about it a should be on right two and d should be true so the l is one or a b true and then c complement right so we can write down this so a should be true okay a and we have b c d right we can write down as okay b and then c complement plus i mean this is not a plus it is or right d okay if this is uh, the, the equation boolean expression uh, for the this one is l lamp to be turned on a should be true and b should be true c should be complement right one and then d or d right then the lamp uh, will be one so we can simplify this also uh, a b right c bar or a um, and okay d a d right so here it says a b c should be true or a d right so the l will be equal lamp will be on so we can uh, as we have seen in this example we can use we can represent this circuit and it's a simple logic using boolean expressions boolean uh, functions let's now talk about uh, the actual logic gates well logic gates are again electronic circuits that operate on one or more input signals and to produce an output signal right um, for example electrical signals uh, such as voltages or current currents exist throughout the digital system or a microcontroller right in either of two uh, recognizable uh, binary values okay for example uh, we have voltage operated circuits that respond to two separate voltage ranges um, that represent a binary 
variable which is equal to uh, logic 1 uh, or logic 0. Again, here is also binary. And uh, also the input terminals of logic gates accept uh, binary signals with the allowable range and respond again at the output terminals with binary signals that fall within the specified range. So uh, in uh, in early computers, uh, switches okay, or the switches were opened and closed by magnetic field, which is produced by uh, coils, energizing coils. Here we talk about uh, we are referring to the switch as example of a logic gate that takes two states on and off, true and false. Later, vacuum tubes were used that open and close current path electronically. Okay, place relays, so as switches. And today we, are, uh, we have transistors, a small uh, electronic uh, circuit component that are used as electronic switches, again, uh, to open or close current paths. So to, to represent logic gates graphically, we have symbols okay, used to designate the three different types of the gates, for example, AND gate, OR gate, and NOT gate. Here, this symbol represents the AND gate. We have two inputs, binary values, right, X and Y, and Z output. Okay, we write it X and Y. And here, okay, uh, here OR, okay, here instead of 5, it should have been uh, equal sign. It's a typo. Well, in this symbol, we have X and Y, um, this symbol corresponding to OR gate. So Z is equal to X or Y. And in this case, this symbol represents a NOT gate or inverter. Okay, if you see uh, these symbols, then, uh, we, which have two inputs, one output, here one input, one output, then and they represent different uh, logical gates and logical uh, operations. So let me uh, write down this here. Z is equal, right? Z is equal X or Y, and then this is equal. The gates, again, are electronic circuits that produce the equivalent of logic uh, 1 or 0 values, the output signals, in accordance with their true stables, right? We talked about AND, OR, and NOT gate true stables. The two input signals, X and Y, to an AND or, or gates take one of the four possible combinations. This could be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. And these input signals uh, can be shown as a timing di diagram. So X, Y, X, Y, right? So it could be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Right. And then the corresponding output of each one of these gates also can be shown as a timing diagram. For example, for AND gate, we have X and Y. When we have 0 and 0, then output will be for AND 0. And for OR, 0. For NOT, okay, we're talking about the complement, right? Let's only take uh, think about x. x is 0, the knot will invert it and it will be 1. Similar to other cases as well. So we can check. x, when it's equal to 1 and 1, uh, and provides 1 or 1. Well, these kind of timing diagrams are useful. Okay, later will be useful for studying different uh, delays and and other characteristics of circuits. And zero is represented by this, right? This square shape is zero. When it is high, then we use one. I mean, this one represents a one, two, or also high state. So again, the low level represents logic zero, high level represents logic one. Okay. We also note that AND gate responds with a logic 1, 
okay output signal when both inputs are what you want or high one one the or gate responds with logic one output is one 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 if either input signal logic is one okay one of them is one right one of the input signal is one well not gate here is more commonly used as an inverter so it just inverts whatever input if it's zero then one if it's one then zero okay the reason again for this name not is apparent from the response and the timing diagram the output logic signal is inverted this one is inverted for uh, input logic x in addition to the function of the gates each gate has another very important property which you call them as gate delay okay gate delay is a length of time it takes for an input change to result in the corresponding output change for example here we have an AND gate timing diagram with the gate delay denoted by t g right t underscore g so this is the input to the AND gate and this is the output the timing diagram the output of the AND gate is shown let's say taking into consideration the AND gate time delay tg okay this is input and then only after uh, some time delay the output changes okay a change again in the output waveform is shifted by tg time if you compare to the change in the input from 0 to 1 When gates are, uh, let's say, attached together to form a bigger logic circuits, the time delays usually adds up. The delays down each path from an input to an output add together. So here, for one specific example, we're talking about 0 0.3 nanoseconds. Very small, right? But when you have bigger circuits, these will add up. So dealing with minimizing the time delay is another um, goal in uh, designing digital circuits. From what we have discussed so far, we can represent uh, logic operation using either true stable, Boolean equation, or logic diagram. In other words, uh, we can describe a specific logic function using either one of these, true stable, Boolean equation or logic diagrams, as we can see here in this example. Look, F, this is F, this is uh, the Boolean equation, right? It is equal to X, right? This symbol represents OR. OR, uh, Y complement, Y bar means Y inverted. This is not Y. And Z, well, this one is an AND gate, right? So, here, Boolean equation is equivalent to this uh, logic diagram. Also, true stable. The true stable lists the relationship between input and output combination for all possible inputs. Okay, we have three variables x, y, z, and the outputs. All right. Note here that the true stables are unique. That shows all possible input output relationship for all possible combinations of input however the equation and then diagram can take different forms in implementing the same logic function well this gives us a flexibility in how we want and how we want to represent the same function this function okay we may come up with a simpler equation which represent same function or a simpler logic diagram or more complex logic diagram now let's talk about boolean algebra we know that the boolean algebra deals with binary variables and logic operations right we also said that we can denote variables by characters letters of an alphabet 
and we also discussed so far about the three basic logic operations that we use, and or not. So let me start with the definition of the Boolean uh, expression. Right? So Boolean expression is an algebraic expression formed by using binary var variables, right? Variables, zeros and ones. And then logic operation symbols that we discussed, and or not. And then parentheses. Uh, that's a Boolean expression. And then Boolean function can be described by a Boolean equation that consists of a binary variable which identifies the function followed by equal sign and a boolean expression right so here what we see here is uh, the table uh, which consists of the consists the list of the most basic identities of boolean algebra that we will be using so the first nine identities one two three four up to nine shows the relationship between a single variable x and its complement and the binary constant 0 and 1 right x or 0 is x x or 1 is 1 x and 1 is x x and 0 is 0 these are very useful identities that we'll be using x or x complement is one, okay? X uh, not x two times not is equal to x itself. All this. Uh, the next five identities that range uh, from 10, 11, 13, I mean 12, 13, 14, uh, have their uh, counterparts in ordinary algebra, okay? We can call them as commutative, associative properties. And then last three identities, as we see here, is 15, 16, 17. They don't apply in ordinary algebra. Probably we haven't seen them. But they are the uh, one of the very useful uh, identities that we will be using to manipulate Boolean expressions. Okay, this one is called the De Morgan's law. Um, and then all these basic, let's say, rules listed in this table uh, have been arranged into two columns. First column, and then second column. Okay, why? Because we want to demonstrate the, the important property of duality of Boolean algebra. So let's talk about the duality. What is a dual of an algebraic expression? Well, dual of this expression is obtained by interchanging, for example, OR operation to AND operation, X OR X AND, and then also uh, replacing the ones, let's say, by zeros, or zeros by ones. So the, the dual of this expression is equal to this one. So we change the uh, operation and zeros change to the one. Okay, the operation and change to the, I mean, or change to the and. Well, look at the similarity between two columns. Equation in one column of the table can be obtained from the corresponding equation in the other column by taking the dual expression of uh, on both sides of the equal sign. Check. And uh, we can provide some formal uh, definition of the properties of those identities and algebra as follows. So the identities between 1 and 4 are called existence of 0 and 1. Okay, uh, in this case, 0 and 1. Um, and some others. So uh, 5 to 6, uh, Eden potents and then seven to eight existence of complement etc etc. Here uh, I just want to define another uh, property called uh, self dualness of a boolean function. So a function, okay, is said to be self dual if and only if its dual is equivalent to the given function. 
right? So there is a self-dual property. In other words, for any logical expression, we see that if we take the two times dual, then we can get the original expression. Well, in self-dual expression, if we take just one time dual, we get the same expression. We will see that in example. Yeah, here. So we say, unless it happens to be self-dual, then dual of an expression doesn't equal to expression self. Only self-dual, in the self-dual case, the dual of an expression will be equal to this itself. But in if not self-dual, then you have to take two times dual to get the same expression. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, example. So given the following well, Boolean uh, expression, a uh, Boolean function f is a uh, or c complement or not c uh, and b or zero, right? We can take the, the dual by changing the operations from or to and and then replacing the let's say zeros with ones right so a or c naught changes a and c naught and then this or changes to and this and changes to or and then uh, or changes to and and the zero changes to one and if we simplify this further then the dual of this function is equal to a and not c or b why do we care about duality? So the actually the duality or the principle of duality is important uh, concept in Boolean algebra, particularly uh, in proving various theorems. And the principle of duality is widely used in proving Boolean algebra theorems. So it is uh, it can be uh, very useful actually. So now let's take a look at this function, g and equal to x and y or for instance inside the print w or z and then we have the complement, right? What? How can we get the dual, dual of these? How about the second one? And can you say that f, g, h, any one of these functions are self-dual? So to get the dual of this g, it's easy, right? x, we change the and to or, and then this one changed to and, and also this one changed. So think about, I mean, take your mom and try to write down the dual. So let me write it down here. So first x, so we change um, and to or, right? And then this or change to and we also change this or to and and then we leave the complement right this one is a dual of the the previous question and then we can simplify that x yeah well, what about this one, h? What's the dual of the h? It's very similar. We just need to uh, use one of the Boolean identities. The following one. Use the following Boolean identity. And then we can write it down as follows. Now, the question is, are any of these functions are self-dual? Or are any of these functions self-dual? The Boolean operator precedence, or the order of evaluation is as follows in Boolean expression. First, parenthesis, done. Second, not, operator, and then, and, operator, and or. The consequence of, of these order is that the parentheses will always appear around all expressions. In this example, f. Okay, first is parentheses, second is not, and then and and or. 
Now let's take a look at the following example which demonstrates Boolean algebraic proof. For instance, we can take a look at this so-called absorption theorem that states A or A and B is equal to A. Well, how can we prove it? Yeah, we can prove it by justification using identity or theorem. So first, uh, let's uh, uh, work out the following. A or A and B, right? So we can use the following uh, identity. So to introduce A and 1 or A and B, right? And then so that we can take the A out. And we are left with 1 plus B, right? So here we are using a distributive law to take out the A. Right? And then 1 plus b is always equal to 1. It's always true, right? So a and 1. We're using the following property. 1 or x is always 1. And then, yeah, we are proving that using, again, same identity. x and 1 is a x. So these are the simple steps, right, using identity. So we prove that A or A and B is equal to A. So uh, the main reason for doing proofs is to learn careful and efficient use of identities and theorems of Boolean algebra. And we learn how to choose an appropriate identity or theorem and then apply to make forward progress or irrespective of the application. So we will be uh, using all these identities later on to uh, to optimize a Boolean expression or to to reduce the number of literals or number of uh, variables. Here is another example okay, well, what, that we can use for proof. So consensus theorem, which states the following relationship. A and B or A, not A and C or B and C is equal to A and B or not A and C. How can we prove it? Right. So let's work on this uh, right hand side. Try to simplify. Can we prove it? I challenge you to use those identities that we mentioned above and then prove this using the following steps. Okay. So this one. Uh, we can use um, 1 and b is equal to b, right? The following Boolean identity. So, and then we use a or a not is equal to 1. This is another uh, Boolean identity, right? So instead of 1, we write down this, right? a or not a is equal to 1. Right. So this allows us to further write it down as follows. A, B, A, not. And then we just uh, open up the parentheses. A, B, C, not A, B, C. Right. And then uh, we can further go on and simplify A, B, A, B, C. We rearrange the terms, right? or a not a c and then we are left with not a b c well further moving on we use um, this one again let's say x and x uh, a b and introduce one here c okay um, this one is not, right? Not A, C, another, we introduce one here. Not C, B, right? Well, now, we can further collect similar terms. A, B, 1, or C, right? Or 
A not C, we take out 1 or B. Well, what do we have here? This one is always 1. Right? They are always 1 here. I mean, X or 1 is always 1 for any variable. So we are left with A, B, this is 1, or A, not C, right? As shown here. So again, uh, using Boolean identities, right, or theorems, can be used to perform uh, algebraic proofs of, for example, this kind of theorem. So you should uh, somehow learn those identities and even memorize by heart uh, so that they will be used. I mean, you can use them easily, efficiently. Here we have another example, example three. Can we prove these relationships? Can we do this algebraic proof? Right? Here, one of the uh, useful uh, technique is to use uh, De Morgan's law. Right? De Morgan's identity. So, let me write it down. A or B, okay, complement, equal to A not not a and then not b so this is a de morgan's law right so easy way to remember the de morgan's law is uh, i like it like break the line change the sign okay if you have something like this and if you want to use a uh, de morgan so break the line change the sign sign uh, operator sign okay so this one is a de morgan's uh, law that we will be using for um for performing our proof. Let me. So let's work on this side. So how, can we apply here the Morgans? Yeah. So look, X, change, break the line, change the sign. Y not, and then Z, right? We're applying the Morgans here, X or Y complemented. Okay, and then x, y. And um, we can apply commutative law, switching the, the order, right? So y not, x not, z, and then y not, x, right? We're just switching the order of y not to x. And then uh, we can apply, I mean, we can take the y out, so we call it the distributive law, right? x, not z or x this is what we are left with equal equal right and then uh, how can we further simplify this if we will use let's say um, distributive law which can be defined as a, a for an a b c this one is true a or b and then a or C. We will apply this here. So if you do that, then we got uh, Y not, X not, X, Z, or X, right? We applied this uh, distributive this law, which uh, in turn allows us to simplify. What is this equal? This is equal to 1, right? Then we are left with 1, z, or x, right, and, okay, we obtained what we wanted, this is what we obtained here, right. well, here, uh, the main tool was uh, the De Morgan's, De Morgan's law, which allowed us to change this term. Here, we have a list of the useful theorems that can be used when we deal with Boolean expressions, Boolean functions. For example, the minimization is, um, has the following form, absorption, simplification, consensus, 
and also De Morgan's law are very handy in most of the cases. So it's uh, advisable to uh, to keep these theorems somewhere in your notes uh, so that you can use them later. And of course, uh, you can try to pr uh, prove or all these um, relationships, right? Uh, using uh, just like the uh, examples we have seen before, using different identities. For example, here, uh, in order to prove this relationship uh, with proof of simplification, we can use uh, those identities, some uh, algebraic laws, uh, as we did earlier. So, what we see here is, okay, this original uh, equality, and then the second one is actually the dual of the first expression, right? So, in, if you want to get the dual of this expression, we change the and to or, or to and, and we get the following, right? So how can we prove this? Think about it. Well, we can use a distributive law first. So we take probably y out, right? And we're left with x or x uh, complement, right? And then y. So yeah, um, okay, y, x, or is y. So this one is 1, right? Then we are left with just y. This part is y, and then we got y. What about the, the proof of the De Morgan's law? Right? De Morgan's law, uh, I mean, uh, these are the following equalities right and more so x or y complement is equal to x complement uh, and y complement right i'm using this uh, interchangeable not x or x complement are same well I, I leave this as an exercise to do this proof and uh, just uh, remember that um you, you, you to show this um we need to show, first of all, we need to use some of the identities. Like, for example, like a, a, a not one of the identity, and then a, a not is equal to zero. With also, uh, where you can assume that x or y is a, and then x complement is x and y complement just like the examples we have seen uh, above right try to prove this use the distributed laws committed laws uh, and some other identities <clears throat> now let's talk about a boolean function evaluation given for example the following functions f1 f2, f3, and f4, how can we evaluate them for a given uh, input variables, right? Binary variables, x, y, z. For different uh, combinations of uh, x, y, z, the value of f1, f2, f3 can be evaluated. For example, f1, if all is 0, right? x is 0, y is 0, and then not z is 1, right? And output will be 0. For all of these cases, f1 will be 0 most of the case because we're dealing with AND, right? In AND case, uh, all variables should be 1, so that we'll have 1. In this case, 1 and 1 and not 0 is 1, right? So f1 will be 1, corresponding. f2 consists of two terms. In f2, uh, x, uh, x or y complement or not y z so in this case what we have f2 is 1 when we have x0 okay y0 y0 will be complement it will be 1 and then 1 1 right and also uh, f2 will be 1 whenever x1 is 1 right so if you go down 1 1 1 1 2 all output will be 1 
What about F3? F3 can be uh, similarly evaluated. We just need to plug in all those values into these terms, right, and then evaluate. For example, here, if all x, y, z are zero, what will be the output of F3? We can check it will be one. For these ones, it will be zero, zero, okay, one, 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 um, zero, zero, okay? We just need to uh, plug all those values in and then see. So we can see, look, when x, y, z, all of them are zero, we have complements or nots, right? Then all zeros will turn into one, then output is one, right? And then in this case, well, in this case, y is one, because uh, y, one, okay, x is zero, but complement, this will be one, 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 okay, then it will be one, true. Similarly, you can check the value for f4. First, zero, 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 if you plug in, then it will be zero. One, okay, zero. So, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, simply yes, plugging in and then checking, calculating, or basically evaluating those uh, functions. One of the important applications of Boolean algebra is in optimization or simplification of the Boolean expressions. For example, um, here we want to simplify a Boolean expression so that it will contain the smallest number of literals, either complemented and uncomplemented variables, okay, literals. So, for example, we have the following Boolean expression uh, with five terms, A, B, not, okay, A and B, or not A, C, D, and other terms, right? So, can we use Boolean, Boolean algebra techniques to simplify this, right, to with the hope uh, to uh, minimize, get rid of the, uh, you know, minimize the redundancy. So we can apply uh, tools, techniques that we have discussed. I mean, so for example, um, A, B, C, D, okay, we rearrange the terms. We take this here and then, uh, well, A, C, D is here, A, C, D, and then A, B, D, okay, we just rearrange terms and then we take the cd variable out in this case cd okay cd uh, and also here a not complement and then okay here d not d so we, we are taking here a not not ac okay two variables Okay, and then we are minimizing this to one. And what we are left with is AB, and then AC, uh, and then we have this term, right, right here. And uh, further we can simplify that out as follows. So finally we have five uh, literals, okay? Five variables b a d a c complemented and not complemented so from these right we obtained a simpler boolean expression why do we need to simplify because we want to uh, implement these as a logical circuits right so in log if you want to draw these uh, graphically using and and or gates we will see fewer number of gates in this specific uh, example. If we draw this one, we'll have a lot of AND and OR gates, but after applying Boolean algebra, we can simplify it to five literals and obtain the same, I mean, uh, circuits which perform the same operations, equivalent to the following. Well, uh, we'll see later, it is uh, very important to optimize the circuits. Uh, things like um, gate cost, which will be studied in the next lecture. Now uh, let's briefly talk about uh, complementing the function. 
The complement representation for a function, for any function f, can be obtained from an interchange of uh, ones to zeros, zeros to ones, or the values of um, a function in the truth table. Right? Algebraically, we can apply De Morgan's theorem, De Morgan's theorem to complement the function. The generalized uh, form here. Uh, generalized form of the De Morgan's law or theorem states that the complement of an expression is obtained by interchanging AND and OR operators and then complementing each variable and constant as shown in this example given this f function so first we interchange AND and ORs right and then complement each constant so here, not x and y and not z. The complement of this first term will be the following. Okay, x. Okay, uh, we denote this over bar and the complement of function as a over bar by a bar over the function. x or y. Okay, here uh, complement and z, and then this or turns into and. Right x okay not x and then and change to or and then y not y okay, turned into y and then not z into z and then to and change to or now think about uh, the complementing the following function g right equal to the, the parentheses not a okay uh, or bc not d or e so do the two things interchange and and or operators and then complement each constant value and then the literal what do you obtain okay think about it well easy a so we complement a not the uh, not cancels out and then uh or change to AND, right? So B complement, C complement, or D, okay? Uh, here it's not there. Okay. And then we have E complement. Take your time and double check if this is correct. 